Welcome everybody to Carnivores of Maine. We'll be getting started in about 10 minutes. If you're watching us uh, through Zoom, you can open up your chat and question and answer windows if you hover your mouse over the Zoom control bar. Um, and we'll be starting in about 10 minutes. If you're watching through YouTube, welcome. Hi, We're happy to have you. Of Maine. We'll be getting
Welcome everybody to Carnivores of Maine. If you're just joining us, it's gonna be another about five minutes while we let everybody log in. If you are watching through Zoom, please remember that you can go ahead and move your mouse over the control bar to open up the question and answer or the chat windows and that way you can talk to us. If you're watching through YouTube, feel free to write a message in the comments. We'll be starting in about five minutes. Welcome everybody to Carnivores of Maine. We're gonna get started in just a couple minutes. I am, however, gonna switch so we can uh, see the links down at Maine Wildlife Park while we are waiting. Hi everyone. So yeah, the links are being pretty active here behind us. I'll step out of the way so we can watch them. So while you're watching the links and you're just signing in, I just want to remind everybody, if you are watching through Zoom, if you hover your mouse over the um, control bar for Zoom, you can find a question and answer button as well as a chat button to go ahead and communicate with us. And if you are watching through YouTube, please feel free to uh, write a comment in the chat in the chat box on the side there. I'm going to give people just about one more minute to, to log in because we do have quite a few joining us and then we'll get started.
All right, welcome everybody again to Carnivores of Maine. Uh, um, this is brought to you by Maine Inland Fisheries and Wildlife and Maine, um, down at Maine Wildlife Park, we have Jade, one of our educators, and she is down there in front of our Canada Lynx exhibit. And I'll turn it over to Jade, who's down at the wildlife park. Okay, good morning, everyone. My name is Jade. I'm an educator for um, the Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife. And today I'm here at the wildlife park in front of our Canada Lynx enclosure. Um, here at the wildlife park, we have a number of native Maine um, species that are non-releasable, so they can't live in the wild anymore. Um, they are here for a number of different reasons. Most are either from an injury, um, being orphaned, or in some cases they were even illegal pets um, that were confiscated and can no longer live in the wild. We have over 30 different species of animals. Um, we have bears, bobcats, lynx, uh, beavers, raptors, all kinds of different animals here. Um, again, over 30 different species. So today we're going to focus on um, Maine's carnivores. So there are many different types of animals here in Maine. We have mammals, reptiles, fish, birds, amphibians. Um, but another way that we can group these animals or categorize these animals is by what they eat. So here we can see different types of diets that an animal might have. So an herbivore eats mostly plants. An omnivore eats a little bit of everything. So they're gonna eat both plants and meat. And then the one that we're gonna talk about today are carnivores and they eat mostly meat. And that's what we're gonna be talking about. So we have a lot of, of different carnivores in Maine. Can you name an animal that you think of in Maine that is a carnivore? So a lot of people, when you think of a carnivore, we think of very, very historic carnivores, these dinosaurs that no longer live here in Maine. <laughs> but the ones that do live in Maine now are um, some different canines. So we have our coyotes and our foxes. And they eat a lot of meat, but they also eat some plants and berries sometimes. Then we have felines like the Canada lynx that we're here in front of and bobcats. And they eat almost completely meat. They have a com almost completely meat diet. We have bats that eat insects. We have different weasels like fisher and mink. We also have spiders and dragonflies. And we also have different reptiles like turtles and snakes that eat meat. And of course, lots of species of bird that also um, eat meat, like our raptors, different eagles, hawks, falcons, and vultures and owls, and also um, water birds like loons and our shorebirds and terns and puffins that eat different meat and fish. So those are a lot of carnivores. Um, and that's not even all of the different carnivores that we have here in Maine. That's just uh, a short list of, of many. So what makes an animal a carnivore? So again, they have to eat a diet that is mostly meat and other animals, including fish and insects. So they might accidentally, or they might very rarely eat plants, but they're mostly eating um, meat. And there's our Canada lynx walking around behind us. That's the male, he's doing a scent marking behavior. See if he comes back around again. So another um, way that we can tell an animals are carnivore is that they're going to be a predator. So they have designed and adaptations for hunting. So carnivores, of course, to catch those animals, those fish and those insects, they need to have special adaptations for hunting those meals. So they have bodies that are built for their specific prey in their specific habitat. Here we can see a coyote in a field and it's an Excellent example of their camouflage. So you can see the fur of the coyote blends in really well with its habitat, and that's gonna help them hunt and stalk their prey. And other animals will also have different 
furs, feathers, and different skins that also help them camouflage. They also have different wings, legs, and bodies designed for very fast movement, for chasing and for flying after their prey. Also different adaptations such as their eyesight. So predators have eyes that face forward and they have binocular vision. So cats, hawks, and humans, we all have our eyes facing forward and that is a good sign that we are predators. And it gives us a really good um, sight and, and view for hunting. And then also another sense that uh, predators have is a good sense of smell and hearing. So here we see different uh, vulture and a couple different canines um, and you can see they're, they're adapted for that good smell and, and sight also. And then another one that we look at is their teeth. So it's not always teeth, sometimes it's a beak or a different kind of jaw, but they're designed for eating meat. So they'll have a very strong jaw and neck for biting and eating. They'll have sharp pointed teeth and sharp beaks. And they'll also have sharp claws for holding and ripping and gripping onto that, that food that they're eating. And again, each of these adaptations is gonna be unique to their habitat and their prey. So as we go through today, we'll look at some more specific examples of all these different groups of animals and their special adaptations that make them carnivores and make them predators. The first one we'll look at are gonna be canines. So Maine has both foxes and coyotes that are canines and they do mostly eat meat, but they will sometimes eat plants. Um, so they are in the omnivore group. This is the coyote that is here at the park. We have a female coyote here at the park. And you can also see her beautiful fur coat um, blends in really well with her, her natural um, enclosure there. So we'll look here at a coyote skull. And we'll look at some of the adaptations that we started to talk about. So one of the first things we're gonna look at is on top of the skull here, this crest. This is called the sagittal crest and it gives the muscles more biting power. So the muscles that connect down into the jaw are gonna give this a really, this coyote a really strong bite and strong biting power. We also look at the long snout. That's gonna help for their sense of smell. They're gonna have a lot of smell receptors inside of this snout. And then of course their teeth. So a coyote is gonna eat small mammals, rabbits, squirrels, things like that. And they're gonna use these teeth. And again, they're omnivores. We can see that they have very, very sharp teeth. They're pointed for eating meat. And we'll look at some others as we go along that'll be even sharper. Some of their back teeth towards the back of their mouth aren't even as sharp because they do sometimes eat those those berries and things like that that they'll find too. Another thing we'll look at here is this coyote fur. So this again is gonna help them blend into their habitat. They live in grasslands and forests and this fur can help them camouflage and hide from their prey so they can sneak up on them. And we'll also look at these long legs. Just stand back to get these legs all the way in the screen here. And these are another adaptation for running and chasing down their prey, long legs to cover a lot of ground. And canines have pointed ears and again their eyes are facing forward, more predator adaptations. The next one we'll talk about is another canine, these are fox. So in Maine we have both red fox and gray fox. And you can tell from their coat, which one are the gray and which one are the red, but also the grays are a little bit smaller than the red fox are. And we have some furs here for them too, but we'll look at their skull first. So very similar to the coyote skull because they are both canines, they're in the same family. And again, you see the sagittal cr crest on top, helping with that bite force. The long snout, that's gonna help them smell really well. And those sharp teeth for eating meat, very similar to the coyote skull. 
Then there are different furs here. So this is the red fox fur. And this is the gray fox. And you can see the different colors here. So this one is the gray fox and this one's the red fox. And they have different furs for their different habitats. So a gray fox is a really good tree climber. So their fur is more the color for blending into the trees. And they're really, really good, good climbers. So they also eat foods that are, they find in the trees like um, birds, eggs, things that they're gonna find in the trees up there. And also we can look at their long tail. And they're using that long tail for balance when they're climbing and running around. But the red fox too, both fox, will also use that long tail for keeping themselves warm. So they use it like a blanket to wrap around them. We have a really good picture of a red fox all cuddled up in the snow. And you can see they have their tail tucked all the way around their face and body for extra warmth. And they're a little bit smaller than that coyote. So they're gonna be a little extra nimble and flexible and, and jump around and hop around a little bit better. And their diet is different small mammals, um, rodents, rabbits, similar to the coyote. And still they're, they're kind of, they're more of the omnivores because um, they'll also eat some of those plants and different berries and things that they'll find around also. The next one we're gonna talk about are felines. And these are our bobcats and our, our Canada lynx. And here we can compare the two of them. They're often um, mistaken for each other and they can be very hard to tell apart, um, especially when you're not looking at them right next to each other. But we can see here that the Canada lynx has longer tufts on the top of its ears. So those hairs that grow long out the tops of their ears are longer than the bobcat. They also are usually a little bit larger and especially their feet. They'll have much bigger feet than the bobcat will. And their fur is different too. So the bobcats have more stripes and spots on their fur. And the, the lynx has a lot less spots and a and lot less stripes on their fur. But they are pretty tricky to tell apart when, when you see them out in the wild. But they have these different adaptations from each other because they live in different habitats. So we have our lynx here. And it has a grayer, thicker coat. So they are living um, in northern Maine in snowier areas of the state. So they have different coats than the bobcat does because they're doing different things. The bobcat fur here is a lot more marked and spotted. You can see all those markings and spots and that's because they live all over the state where there's gonna be less snow and they're gonna be more in like forests where this coat is gonna help them blend in better. We'll also look at the bobcat skull. And again, the felines are carnivores and they almost only eat meat. So they have very sharp teeth. They're like scissors, these sharp pointy teeth for eating meat. They also have a much shorter snout than the canines do. So they don't have the long snout that comes out. And that short snout actually helps them um, bite stronger and gives them a stronger biting power. And again, those overlapping sharp teeth are like scissors. They're very pointy. And these are some different pictures of lynx and bobcat here at the park. So the lynx, laying on the ground and then the bobcat sitting. And again, you can kind of see the different markings and different colors of their fur, um, those ear tufts. So those are two that are here at the park. The next group of animals that we'll talk about are weasels. And weasels have a few different adaptations for being predators. They can eat something that is three times their body size and take down an animal three times their body size. They have very long, slender, muscular bodies, and those help them chase down and catch prey. And they also have skulls with very pointed teeth. So here we have a mink is the first picture, and then the marten, the pine marten was the other picture. The first one we'll talk about is a mink. 
So they are adapted, they're excellent swimmers. They can be found along our, our coastline and at rivers and ponds. And they eat different things that they find in those aquatic habitats like fish, frogs, ducks, mice, and even freshwater mussels and insects. And you can see from this picture that long slender weasel shaped body for catching those different things. The next one we'll talk about is the martin. We also call them pine martins. And this is a picture of a pine martin in a pine tree. They are excellent climbers. So they are adapted for living in the trees and for climbing um, through the trees. They live in mixed forest habitats in Northern Maine. And they're gonna eat things that they find in the tree like birds, eggs, small mammals, and then down on the ground, they'll also eat voles, moles, um, and sometimes different fruits, nuts and berries also. And I have a pine martin fur here. And you can see that really long, thin body, that weasel shaped body, and the long tail too. It's gonna help them balance when they're running around through the trees. The next one we'll talk about is the fisher. And fisher also live in the trees. They are also well adapted for climbing. This is a fisher here at the wildlife park. And you can see he's showing us his nice climbing skills. And he has that long tail and that long slender body. He's larger than the pine martin is. And very, very um, good predators. They are one of the few predators of porcupines. They know, they have learned, they're very smart and they will knock the porcupine out from trees or startle them so they can get to their underbellies where they have fewer quills. So they've learned how to eat those very porky, very pokey porcupines. And they also eat snowshoe hare and squirrels. They don't eat fish. So they don't eat the thing that they are named after. <laughs> and they live in different coniferous and mixed forests in Maine. And again, they're arboreal. So that means they live up in the trees. The next one we'll look at is a river otter. They are the uh, most aquatic of all the weasels. And they live in different um, family groups. They're very social. So we can see here the different otters. And that other, the one picture that looks a little less friendly is of that otter eating. So we think of otters as being these very cute, cuddly animals. And sometimes they are. But we also have to remember that they are predators. They are carnivores. So they eat fish. And an interesting fact about river otters is they actually eat the faces off of the fish. So even though they do look cute and, and we love the river otters, we do need to remember that they too have those predator um, adaptations, very sharp teeth, and they're eating um, fish, frogs, crayfish, and they'll even eat uh, young beavers. And they live in the, the river embankments. The next one we'll look at, oh, I actually have a river otter fur here. So this is the river otter fur. You can see they're very big, but they still have that slender, sleek body. And especially the river otter where they live in the water a lot, they have special fur that's gonna help keep them warm and waterproof outside when they're in the water. And they still have that long weasel tail too. So the last weasel we'll talk about are the ermine. They are short-tailed weasels. And this is a picture of an ermine in the uh, spring or the summer. So you can see it's nice brown fur and they're very small, but they need to eat two thirds of their body weight each day. And we'll look here at their, in comparison to that brown fur, this is a fur from the winter. So they drastically change the color of their fur for the seasons to help them blend in, in their habitat. So in the summer um, months, they're brown to blend in, and then in the winter, they turn white to blend in with the snow. And again, that long, that very slender weasel-shaped body, and these are the short-tailed weasels. So they don't have as long of tails in comparison to their body size as some of the other weasels we looked at. And as I was saying, they need to eat two thirds of their body weight each day. And they've even been known to when they um, 
do kill something that has fur, they've been known to take the fur from their prey and actually line their burrows with it to stay warm in the winter. So they are very resourceful, very smart. And they're gonna live in different fields, forests, and even in urban areas throughout Maine. So those are all the weasels. Another group of predators that we'll talk about are snakes. So this is the Eastern racer snake pictured. And we have eight different species of snake in Maine. So the Eastern racer like this one, we also have the Eastern ribbon and the brown snake. So the Eastern racer that's pictured here, they are endangered. The Eastern ribbon and the brown snake are both species of special concern. So if you see any of those snakes, you definitely wanna report that to um, the Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife so that we can help keep track of those populations. Um, and then we also have garter snakes, milk snakes, northern water snake, ringneck, red belly. And then the timber rattlesnake is extirpated. So that means that we used to have timber rattlesnake populations in Maine and we don't anymore. So especially if you see one of these, you wanna let someone know because we don't have any populations of them left in Maine. So if you happen to find a timber rattlesnake, definitely wanna let someone know. So some special predator adaptations that snakes have, they have very muscular bodies. Almost their entire body is a big muscle. And that is to chase down and squeeze their prey. And then they also have a jaw that can open really wide and it can unhinge the back of their jaw to swallow their prey whole. So they don't do any chewing. They're gonna open up their jaw and swallow their prey entirely. I also have a snake skin here. So this has been shed off of a snake. And this is another protective layer that the snake has on its body. And if we look at the front here, you can see, if I can angle it right, those two holes at the top, those are um, the scales that even cover their eyes. So they have scales that go all the way up their faces, covering their eyes. This top side is the top side of their body, the top scales. And then these are the underbelly scales. And they shed these skin and have new skin underneath. And different snakes are gonna have different diets of rodents, insects, small mammals and amphibians, um, sometimes even birds or, or bird eggs. The next reptile we'll talk about are snapping turtles. So here, oh, <laughs> there we go. So here we have some different snapping turtle pictures. Some, so snapping turtles will hide in the bottom of their um, ponds or lakes and it's very muddy and they'll sit there and sometimes even algae will grow on the backs of their shells because they sit very still. And then when their prey gets close, they lunge and snap and swallow them with that very powerful turtle beak that they have. And here I have a snapping turtle shell. And again, just like the snake has its protective skin for armor, this is the turtle shell's protection. This is their armor. So this is gonna help them blend in and camouflage and protect them on the bottom of the pond. And then they also have very long necks. So snapping turtles have very, very long necks that help them reach out. And you can see too that turtle shells are actually attached to their bodies. So their bone is actually grown into their shells. It grows with them. I also have a snapping turtle skull and we can see their big jaw. This one is missing the lower part and it's missing the part that actually makes the beak of the turtle, but it does show us how big their jaw is and how powerful they can use that. All right, so moving on, we have different birds here in Maine that are also predators that are carnivores. So we have different raptors and birds of prey. These are five different raptors here. So we have eagles and hawks, and they have great eyesight for soaring really up high 
over their prey and seeing their prey from up high. Different vultures, like turkey vultures, they have a sense of smell that is very good for finding carrion, for finding um, animals that have already died for them to eat. There are falcons and they have very good eyesight and the shape of their wings allows them to move very fast. They are very fast flyers. And of course we also have owls and they have a lot of different adaptations such as um, excellent hearing and a facial disc shape for catching sound. I have a great horned owl mount here. And we can see, we can tell he's a great horned owl based on these feathers on the top of his head. That's how they get their great horned owl name. And they are a, a species that is um, a carnivore and they are predators. They have that binocular vision. So they have excellent vision. They can see that facial disc shape that helps attract sound towards them that very sharp curved beak, if I get him closer here, it's a very, very sharp hook shaped beak for catching and eating different rodents and small mammals. And then also here on the bottom are these talons. So different birds have different talons. Owls here have um, fluffy uh, feathers that cover their feet and legs, and then these super sharp hooked talons on the bottom for grabbing and catching their prey. Owls have these fluffy feathers, but a lot of other raptors don't have these fluffy feathers on their feet. They just have their skin that shows down to their big talons. Another bird that we have here in Maine that's a carnivore are loons. And loons are adapted to be excellent divers. Their entire bodies are designed for diving and swimming. Their legs are actually so far back on their bodies that they can't stand on land. They only live in the water. And they're designed, those beaks are designed for stabbing and grabbing fish. So they dive down and they use those sharp beaks to grab the fish swimming beneath them. And these are two loons with a, a baby loon in between them. So to sum up, carnivores play a very important role in nature. There are a few different things that carnivores do to help stabilize up um, nature and, and the environment. So they help control populations. So from one species to another to not damage or, ha or, or spread a disease in the habitat, um, they take out those weak animals and they keep populations strong and at a place where the habitat can manage um, all the animals that live there. Another thing is they are scavengers. So they help to clean up dead animals that are in the habitat. They also help protect the plants and the plant growth by controlling the herbivore populations. So they help control the populations such as rabbit and deer that eat a lot of the plants in those habitats. And even small predators, injured or young predators can fall into being prey. So it's a lot more complicated than just one animal eating another animal. Um, nature is very complicated. So even some predators are prey as well. If anyone has any questions at this point about anything we've talked about, about carnivores, um, I'd love to take any questions. So we do have a couple of questions that people are typing in. Um, there are two that are about snake sheds. It is, do snakes shed more than once a year and are they shedding because they are growing? So most snakes do shed more than once a year. Um, it's healthy for a snake to be shedding um, a lot of time monthly or maybe bi-monthly. And it's just like our um, our, our fingernails, our skin, our hair, um, how we lose it and it grows back. So it's, it's important for them to shed their skin so that new healthy skin can grow in behind it. All right, and another question we have is, could you go over again, what types of things that a, a turtle who's a carnivore is eating? 
Yeah, of course. So turtles are going to live um, mostly close to the water in the water. So if it's a carnivore like our snapping turtles, they are going to eat things like um, they're going to eat like small fish. Uh, they'll sometimes even eat birds. They'll eat frogs and different amphibians. Um, it might occasionally eat some aquatic plants, but they're mostly going to eat those fish, uh, frogs, different eggs, um, and even insects or worms and things like that that they'll find in the water. Uh, we're getting some great questions. We'll take just a few more here. Um, a couple more that we have is, does a, uh, what does it mean that a bird is a raptor? What class classifies them as a raptor? Yeah, so a raptor um, is a bird of prey. So again, they're going to be something that is a carnivore and a predator. Um, there are a lot of different species of raptors. Um, so they range in size, in their different adaptations. Um, so again, it's one of those things that humans name and classify um, based on their different similarities and those different characteristics. So different raptors here in Maine are our eagles and hawks. Um, vultures, falcons, and owls. Those are all different types of um, raptors here in Maine. All right, and the last two questions, unless I get another one really soon, um, will be, uh, do carnivores eat meat? Are they choosing to eat meat? Yes, so a carnivore um, is gonna eat meat, and that doesn't necessarily just mean um, like mammals. So they're going to eat fish, uh, insects, um, all different kinds, kinds of meat. And they have different adaptations for eating those meats. So they're not, they aren't adapted for eating plants. All those adaptations have made it so that they know to eat meat. And a lot of them are learning um, from a young age or from birth from their parents, what to eat, how to hunt, how to use those adaptations that they have physically in behaviors that also help them to hunt. So they definitely are adapted for eating meat. And we do, we do have a question here about turtles. And then we just wanna remind people that this coming Thursday, we have a class specifically related to turtles of Maine. Um, so we will get more into turtle adaptations um, on Thursday at 11 o'clock. Uh, but we'll do about one more question here. And the question is, can a bobcat eat a deer? So a bobcat is going to be a lot smaller than a deer is. So they will work together sometimes to take down some larger prey. Um, but it's unlikely that they're going to expend that much energy to catch an animal that much larger than them. So they are going to prefer to eat animals that are a little bit smaller, like um, different rabbits and hare, um, squirrels, birds, things like that that are a little bit smaller for them to catch and are still a good source of protein and food for them um, because to their body size, they don't necessarily need to take down a deer to stay healthy and strong. Um, so they're adapted for, for the preferred diet of small mammals and birds and things like that. But if they found a deer, they might eat some of the deer that someone else had hunted and got. All right, and these are definitely our last two questions. If you have more questions when this is over, please feel free to message us. We're happy to answer them for you. So the first question is, where do gray foxes live in Maine? That is a good question. So I'm not sure about their specific range. Um, they're definitely more of a... Um, southern coastal and central Maine species. Again, they're living in trees. Um, I would have to look into their actual range and spots where you could see a gray fox in Maine. Um, but that would be a good thing for us to send maybe in our follow-up email if we can find that information and send it along. Uh, very good. We can definitely see what we can find out about that. And the last question for today is, do fishers swim ever? That's a great question. So a fisher is, again, adapted for living up in the trees. They do go on the ground um, and they will go in the water. They are not opposed to going in the water. 
um, but they, again, are not eating fish. So they aren't going in the water to find their food. They're not going into there to be fishing, um, but they will sometimes even just play in the water. Um, our, our fisher here at the wildlife park has a big tub of water and he will roll and play um, in that water and he's definitely not afraid of it. So I don't think that they're afraid of going in the water, but they're gonna be looking for their meals and other things like that up in the trees and on the dry ground. All right, that is all our questions for today. Again, you can message us if you have more, uh, more questions. Perfect. Well, thank you everyone um, for tuning in. I hope that you were able to catch a few glimpses of the links behind us as they were moving around. Um, thank you all for joining us. I hope you had fun learning about Maine's carnivores. If you look at our website, you can see um, a virtual tour of the park and different activities you can do at home also. So on our last slide, we'll have that um, website that you can go to to look at different activities and other resources um, for the department and for the Maine Wildlife Park. So thank you all again. Have a great day. Uh, Ray, thank you everybody for joining us for Carnivores of Maine. Um, you can check us out on mainefishwildlife.com. That's M-E fishwildlife.com for more information about Maine's wildlife and any other educational tools and activities. Our next talk will be this Thursday at 11 o'clock and it's going to be about Maine's turtles. Thank you everybody and have a good day.